Happy New Year, my friend and friends, and to celebrate entering the new year. First of all, I can't believe it's already 2024. That's crazy. I thought it would be fun to take a look at some of the newer CSS features that we have that sort of go under the radar, but that would probably be good to be included in a CSS reset. So let's jump on right over to here where I have nothing set up and I have talked about a very simple reset before that looked something like this right here. Um, then there you go, it's not doing too much, but if we look, it gives us a dark mode. Uh, it is a little bit opinionated because we're doing a font inherit on the star selector here, which you definitely don't have to do, but a nice, very simple, very short reset. And it does basically the job we want it to, but there's some improvements we can make to this. Now to highlight what some of those improvements are, I am going to put some font sizes here on the titles just because it makes them a lot bigger and a little bit easier to see uh, and explain what some of these other parts are. Because the first thing I wanna do is to deal with large font sizes, which is this right here, where you select all your headings and do a text wrap of balance. And when I do that, you'll see this part here, the section two that I have, if I turn that off, it's going all the way across and then we get these two little lonely words all the way over here. And so text wrap balance is a nice one that balances out when we have headings or things like that. Uh, one reason I'm only doing it on my headings is it only works with text that is between two and I believe four lines long, might even only be three. It's really meant to balance out long bits of text that are more for headlines than anything else. And we do actually have an alternative that is for our longer text, which I also think is worth putting into our reset for our paragraphs. And maybe you could include a few other selectors here, which is a text wrap of pretty. And when I do that right now, we're not actually seeing a difference. But before I worry about why this isn't doing anything yet, and it's just where my line breaks are, I am going to come in and suggest another thing that we put on our paragraphs, which is a max width. And what this is, is completely up to you, but it should be no bigger than 75 CH, because that's a comfortable line length to read on. Anything longer than that is a little bit long. So these two together, very nice, they work well. And the nice thing with using the CH unit here is if I did change my font size, and you probably do this on your body and not your paragraph, but just to illustrate how it works, let's really exaggerate by making it a 1.5 or maybe even a 1.75, uh, but you'll notice that the lines are breaking at the same place. It's not a fixed unit, it's based on the font size that we're using. So bigger, smaller fonts, it's always going to keep a nice balance there and you just come in with something that works and maybe this could even be a custom property within your reset that you then change uh, project to project depending on what you need. So that I think looks uh, much better. So I think that is definitely worth including in your reset. But circling back to that idea of pretty, uh, it really depends on how these are breaking. So I mucked around here for a minute and I got this max width of 62 and you'll notice this paragraph here and actually while we're here, let's do a margin uh, bottom of 2rem just to really separate our paragraphs so we can see them a little bit more clearly because again part of my original reset did nuke all of the margins. So just uh, for demo purposes we'll bring that back in there. Uh, and notice how we get this one little lonely word there. And when this happens in typography, this is called an orphan. And we don't want to have any orphans. We want to avoid them. And in typography in general, you, this is sort of a bad thing that you don't want to happen just because it creates awkward gaps and stuff. This is where text wrap pretty will come in and it will prevent any orphans from happening. You can see this other word has come down onto that line. And so just like the text wrap balance here, it's not this big change that it's making. It's just a really small improvement. And in both cases, the pretty does not have the greatest browser support and balance isn't the best in the world either. But if browsers don't have it, that's fine. Nothing breaks on your website. It's just a nice little progressive enhancement. And as more browsers gain support for it and more people have, then they get the nicer experience. So a nice little solution right there. Now, another thing, and just to highlight a little bit more how these next two are going to work, let's just come all the way in my body here. Do not do this. This is not part of it, but I'm just going to say padding of like 4rem or something just to get everything off the edges of the screen because uh, it wasn't looking too fantastic. And so with that in place, let's come down to here and I'm going to throw this in here. And this is an interesting one because it's definitely a bit newer because we're using the has pseudo selector here. Um, but you'll notice I'm putting all this in a prefers reduced motion, no preference. And the idea here is that if we have a site that has, you know, different sections or something that has in page scrolling, we're going to introduce that in. Uh, but in general, if you do that, it is better to have this one inside of the prefers reduced motion, no preference, just so if somebody has opted out, they're not going to get scrolling because well, they've opted out of having uh, those types of motions. So we want to respect that. And then we bring this in and you might be saying, Kevin, we do not need to do that. We could do something like this instead. If you prefer, this is completely fine. <laughs> um, this, this is definitely something that you could do uh, and have in there and you'll notice it's working exactly the same. So if it works exactly the same, 
then why would I want to do this? And the reason for that is, and this it's definitely a little bit more of like a niche use case, but it's in the world where let's just pretend we had something like this, where we have this like limited scroll bar area where we're scrolling inside. So I have the scroll bar here. If I do this as my HTML here, HTML, and actually let's just do a max, max width of 50 VW this way too, just so you can see the scroll bar and it's not under my head. Um, so we can see we get the scroll bar here. If I have this on my HTML, well then this does not have smooth scrolling. It just jumps around. Definitely a bit of a niche use case, but one of those things that could come up. So instead we can say has target. If anything has a, something that's being targeted inside and anything that's being targeted inside is when you have these types of links uh, that are you know, an anchor link actually anchoring to somewhere within the same page. And now whether we have this you know, area here with its own scroll bar, or if we're looking at the HTML element, my scroll behavior smooth is going to come in. And while we're on this note, another thing that I would add with the scroll behavior smooth here is to also have a scroll padding top. And let's just come in with like a three rem or something like that. And what that means is if I click on section three, you'll notice, uh, you know what we're going to do here on the content. Let's put a border of five pixels, solid lime. Uh, so when I click, let's go to my section two, you'll see that there's like a space above the text here. If I take this scroll margin top off and let's go back down and click on section two, that section two is right here at the top. And it's just nice that when it scrolls and it stops, we want it to stop with a little bit of extra space. What unit you put, how much space you put here, it's completely up to you. I tend to go with a larger number, three to five rem. I know some people do very, very small amounts. Uh, it does change depending on your use case. Also, if you have a sticky header, this would prevent things from going underneath your sticky header, which is super useful. You just have to make sure it's big enough to prevent it from going underneath. Uh, so that can be really good. And of course, even if we turn all of this weird stuff off and I'm doing it on like a page by page basis, when I go to section one, I'm not stopping right at the top here where section one is there. It's sort of overshooting it just by a little bit. Uh, and then the like section two, same thing where we're keeping it from being glued right to the top. I just think it makes for a little bit of a nicer user experience. Let's get rid of that now though, uh, cause we wouldn't want to include that, but these two being in here, I think is definitely worth it. But again, if you want just a bit more better browser support, you could definitely come in here just with the HTML and that would be fine as well. And just before we get to the next one that we're going to be looking at here, I'd like to know if there's any things that you include in your reset that you don't normally see other people doing. They could be progressive enhancements or just stuff that I haven't covered here. Maybe there's a font that you do, some line height stuff, whatever it is, leave some comments down below and let me know because maybe it'd be fun to actually create like a full reset that I could share with everybody. And I would love to incorporate your own ideas into it. So please let me know in the comments what you would like to see in a general reset. And don't be shy about including modern CSS and some other stuff along the way in there if you think that it helps out. Now with that, let's get into the next one. Another thing that I would suggest doing is a little bit of an interesting one because what we're gonna be doing is if we look here in my, my text, let's go up to my section one and you'll see here, whoops, I have an extra character. I have two extra characters, but I'm starting the um, paragraph off with the a quotation mark here. And just to make it a little bit more obvious, first of all, let's shrink this down so we can see it properly. Uh, but you'll notice I made that large class. So we're gonna say large has a font size of three rem. And you'll notice I have a quotation mark here. And you no, know it's really ugly. <laughs> Just like we have orphans that are ugly, when you start with a quotation mark or a few other things here, uh, you get this really awkward like lining up of space and everything and it does not look so good. So just like we have the text wrap balance and a text wrap of pretty, another thing that I would recommend uh, is actually going all the way to my HTML where I have my color scheme that was coming in from that original reset that we talked about. Uh, and to come in here and actually say that we're going to do a hanging punctuation first last. And that looks really weird. And when I hit save, nothing changes because it's not supported in Chrome, uh, which isn't the end of the world. But if I come and I take a look at what this would look like in a WebKit browser, and I do apologize because the dark mode isn't working in here, uh, but over here in WebKit, you'll notice that the L is actually lining up with the letters underneath. And this is hanging off the side because we have hanging punctuation. 
And this is just saying that it will be hanging punctuation if it is either the first or the last letter. Uh, the last, you probably won't get it too much, but if ever you're in a weird situation where maybe it needs to happen, at least it's going to look a little bit better and it won't wrap something just because of that final uh, punctuation that you have at the end. It doesn't do it for all characters. If you'd like to know more information about this, uh, I'll put a link to the MDM as well as this article where I got the idea from uh, on Chris Coyer's blog right here. So I'll link that and you have some examples of, of what it looks like and stuff. But definitely uh, I find it looks really ugly when it's like that and it looks so much nicer when it's like this. Hopefully other browsers start supporting this because Safari's actually supported this since like 2006 or something ridiculous. Um, it's been forever. I said six, it's probably 2016. <laughs> it's still, that's a long time um, and no other browser supports it yet. But just like my text wrap balance, like I said, as more browsers start supporting it, eventually, hopefully, maybe, uh, people will just get a better user experience. And, you know, in the meantime, it's not the end of the world um, that it's like this, especially when like the font sizes are a little bit smaller. And you'll notice I am putting this on the HTML and it's inheriting, which is handy. We don't have to put it wherever we need it. But yeah, when the text sizes are smaller, it's not as bad, though it does still leave that little small awkward space right there. Um, so just when you have it, again, let's just bring this up here and take a look. It just looks a little bit better. It's more natural when it hangs off the side. And from, you know, any typography fans would, would much prefer that. Um, and people in general, you won't really notice it, but it's just a nice little improvement uh, on the overall look of your site. And actually, I keep bringing this up and talking about this WebKit browser, and you might notice I am on Windows, and this isn't actually Safari, but it is running WebKit, which is the engine behind Safari, on my Windows computer. If you'd like to know how I'm doing that so I can test how things are working working there. Well, I've covered that in a previous video that you can see right here. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome who are Johnny, Tim, Simon, Andrew, and Web On Demand, as well as all of my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.